My name is Nick Dabas. I'm a New York City DP. I want to talk to you guys about the new Panasonic Lumix S1H. The work that I do is commercial, commercial narrative, and I normally shoot on the Vericam 35 NLT. I got approached by Panasonic to shoot with the S1H uh, because of its compact size and also the fact that you can use it as a director's finder. Um, getting introduced to something that's this small and compact, thought that I was going to be facing a lot of challenges, but I didn't uh, because the battery life is great. It's got pro features like SDI timecode, full-size HDMI. It writes to small SD cards, which are inexpensive. If you're, if you're used to using any pro-level camera, you'll understand it right away. But I, I think within an hour of fiddling around, the menu system is very self-explanatory and it's super easy to use with these cameras. And I own Vericam, so like it's very fast. The menu system's kind of the same. I, I used it a, a little bit in the beginning, but once I set my custom functions, which is great because you have literally, I think like five, four to five custom functions on this camera and you can set it to 60p slow motion. You can set it to your 2398. You can set it to all your various frame rates and settings that you want to use. The custom functions on the camera, I think are like the best way to set this camera up. The button layout actually on this camera is very uh, simple. It's not like a million buttons that are like not usable. I think that they really thought about the, the custom buttons, the button layouts, how everything is spaced out. I'm kind of like very simple like that, just like, you know, Vericam or the Alexa, you know, very simple menus, very simple buttons. Um, I think everybody should take that approach. You know, I personally like the 4K file that comes off of here because what happens is the 6K gets taken down to a 4K full frame. So that gets rid of like a lot of like moray problems and it actually down samples a much nicer looking file. Other reasons why you could use 6K is for plates, you know, VFX. Um, you could probably use 6K for like major stabilization because now like full frame is actually a 3-2 aspect ratio versus where you would use a 17 by 9 on on the full frame. Highlight roll off on this camera is extremely impressive. Um, when I first got this camera, I didn't think I was gonna get impressed by it at all because um, I never shoot with small cameras. Let's put it this way, this camera comes with a lot of different options in Kodaks, but my favorite option is the 4K 422, 10 bit, 400 megabit, all I, just because you can actually go from full frame to super 35 without losing any sort of quality. So you're only just punching in. So effectively your lenses, um, like we shot yesterday um, in the short, was you know two focal lengths. So now you have a super 35, say 35 millimeter and a full frame 35, which can also give you the same look um, in 25, super 35, uh, which is a huge benefit because now your depth of field is much larger and now you can offer to your clients or, or to your films or whatever you guys want to do, the option to actually not lose resolution, not lose Kodak and actually have a true full digital punch in, which is done by the sensor not by software. The V-Log V gamut that's in this S1H is actually real V-Log, real V gamut. Um, it's not just a profile that you get to download or unlock in a camera, um, which helps because now you actually have the color depth because a lot of cameras claim they have 14 and half stops, but the color is not there. So the color is there, the dynamic range is there. To be able to shoot 4000 ISO and 640 with the same exact latitude is huge because now you're minimizing um, the footprint when you're shooting at night. So for instance, when we shot the short, we used probably quarter the amount of light that we would actually need to use and still get the same exact effect, which is huge on time, crew, and the footprint because now you can use, and money as well. So you know, your producers are gonna like that. Panasonic knows that this camera can reach values of 640 and 4000, and that's what they're gonna offer. They're not just gonna 
throw 5,000 just to put 5,000, or give you 800. They actually give you real numbers. Um, and in my tests, um, and I don't do any scientific tests, I actually shoot. With my experience, I didn't notice any color shifts, um, any sort of banding, which is huge with uh, most other companies. I think that's a big feature in, in this camera because most cameras claim dual native ISO, but it's a s software switch versus an electronic switch that's done in camera with a, with a board. Um, and then that's why you get color shifting. So the in-body stabilization on this camera is amazing because you have two different types of in-body stabilization. You have stabilization within the lenses and the body at the same exact time, which helps because it's not cropping the image at all. It's actually giving you full stabilization. So if you take off the lens, you put other lenses on, you have stabilization within the body. You could attach um, on a jib or a crane, you still get a little bit of shake. You always can, there's different features in the camera that can take all that out. Um, you can also have stabilization for handheld. Um, there's so many different features in this camera with stabilization that, that help out a lot. When we used the, the camera on a little mini tripod um, and I had the stabilization uh, on the camera and we did the, the, the almost crane shot with a forklift, I was safety strapped to it. Um, it worked out amazing. It got rid of all those little micro vibrations, which you don't get with a lot of cameras. A lot of other cameras can get confused and, and start shifting the sensor in a way that will not look pretty. So if anybody wants to know like gear I used, right? So like I had to custom make some things for this camera because they're not, they're not out yet, but um, we're using uh, my choice is a uh, Kipon uh, PL mount. The, the PL mount would be a lot more stable once we installed the uh, small bridge plate adapter that I had to custom make because they don't make one yet for this camera. I would say the camera is, is not as light as everybody thinks it is, but it's definitely solid. That's what you want when you're shooting on a, on a lightweight body like this. Cool features are the flip out screen, which can tilt and flip out and it also tilts so if you are shooting from waist level you get a lot more uh, flexibility when you're shooting handheld um, I found myself using that a lot on the Ronin what else is awesome features it comes with a, a HDMI protector and a USB-C uh, protector which also charges your camera it also has other cool features like run stop um, which is an awesome feature. Time code SDI, which is one of my favorite because the sound guy doesn't have to start building something out of scratch for you. It has three record buttons, which is crazy, but you never know. You need three record buttons. So you got one that's on the bottom here, which also can be a custom function. You have one on the top, which is a nice red one here too. And also the shutter button. And you also have white balance, ISO, and exposure. So the camera features two SD card slots, which are SDX2. Other cool features about this camera, I would say, is the amount of custom functions you can do. Um, it's got pro features like shutter angle, uh, synchro scan. It's got custom white balance functions frame lines um, which don't get in the way of the writing like other manufacturers uh, time code readout is is a really awesome feature most cameras don't give you that true time code viewfinder is insane i would say for any director or dp should have one of these you have full frame you have super 35 you have super 16 you also have any type of frame lines, anamorphic, de-squeeze. So like you can frame out the shots and actually take pictures in full 14 and a half stops. Shutter angle helps you because in video world, they, we normally use shutter angles. So anybody that has the fundamentals of cinematography 
uh, can work a lot easier and faster. Um, and if you are a shutter speed person, you have the option to go shutter speed, but you know, I think it's a lot easier to understand shutter angle um, with this camera, especially if you're using it as a B camera or a C camera. Working with the Adorama team is amazing. They really uh, came through, they helped out. They had a lot of inputs that helped out the shoot. And um, that's it. I'm really happy that, that they brought me onto this project. Thank you all for watching. I want to thank Panasonic for letting me borrow this camera to use for this shoot. I want to thank Adorama for actually executing the shoot and making it happen. I also want to thank my cast, crew, and location for putting their heart and soul out to making this film happen. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. And please click on the link below to see the short film. Yeah, I mean, we did it in one day. You know how amazing this is? It's like, we literally shot an entire short film in one day. I mean, granted it was a 16 hour day, but, and I couldn't feel my feet and I still edited. <laughs> but like, I would say, I would say, uh, I don't know. I, I had fun. I loved it. Um, I think working with Adorama was a great experience. You know, working with Fernando Martinez, I love him. I'm definitely gonna You're definitely cutting that out.